Bituay uh, encourages Ukrainian content producers to raise socially relevant themes in TV shows, movies, documentaries, reality shows, and online content. Це історія про борщ, страву, яка дуже різна в різних регіонах України, але тим не менше це страва, яка нас всіх об'єднує. We want funding to develop action series about farmers, how they take advantage of the land reforms to stop radio attacks. Apart from grants, PITUA winners will also receive consulting support from American and European experts. Ми хочемо показати людям, наскільки унікальна і класна є наша країна. Ми хочемо показати зміни, які в ній відбуваються. Ми хочемо показати, наскільки важливо цінувати свою історію і свою культуру. Щойно ми переглянули надихаючий ролик від проєкту Transformation Communications Activity, що фінансується Агентством США з міжнародного розвитку. І за їх підтримки реалізується низка проєктів, присвячених соціально-вагому контенту, включно з конкурсом PHUA та одноіменною освітньою платформою. Наступна наша секція виконується в партнерстві саме з TCA. Тож зараз я з задоволенням запрошую до вступного слова – Марка Елінгштадт, виконуючого обов'язки заступника директора місії USAID в Україні та Білорусі. Please welcome on stage. Dear participants and organizers of the Kyiv Media Week, it's my pleasure to be here today and welcome you to the panel discussion on socially important content. Today, Compelling stories that unite and address social issues play a bigger role than ever due to increased flows of information and the challenges of the COVID pandemic. Last year, USAID launched the Transformation Communications Activity to bring together the government of Ukraine, civil society, the creative sector, and distributors. One goal is to engage Ukrainians in a discussion about a shared European vision and a common set of civic values through the creation of high-quality content. This effort facilitates a broader conversation about citizen-led change that we hope will inspire and engage Ukrainians in the country's ongoing democratic transformation. Since 2019, USAID has supported Pitch UA, a grant contest on social impact content, where we've brought Hollywood experts, such as David Levine, who is yesterday's keynote speaker. They help talented Ukrainian content creators refine scripts and tell their stories. This year, in its third iteration, Pitch UA received 330 applications, clearly demonstrating the great potential of the creative sector to reinforce democratic resilience through art and culture. TV shows produced by previous winners of Pitch UA, such as Borsch and There Will Be Humans, as well as YouTube shows such, such as Mama, I'm Doing Business, have been watched by millions of Ukrainians. Their popularity underscores the audience demand for socially important content. Engaging stories about Ukrainians, told by Ukrainians, may even reframe the conversation on the country's democratic changes. They help everyone focus on that which unites us, rather than that which divides us. One example is the TV series Mama, a winner of Pitch UA's second season. The series is based on a true story of a Ukrainian mother whose only son was captured by separatists in the temporary occupied territory of Luhansk Oblast and her search to bring him back. The series is dedicated to the mothers of Ukrainian soldiers 
including their struggles and sacrifices for the good of the nation. With that in mind, I hope that everyone here will continue to amplify Ukrainian voices by using the best international practices while highlighting unique local experiences. As you know, you need both a great story and great production to create great content. We also encourage you to join the Pitch UA educational platform, where the world's media experts share their insights on how to create highly rated content that is beneficial for society. As the Pitch UA motto says, be creative, be Ukrainian. I hope you have an inspiring and en engaging discussion over the, the, the next day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ellingstad. Um, зараз за промовою виступить наш спеціальний гість Джаред Мілред. Він є засновником та президентом Show for Change та Movie Karma. Він є поборником різноманітності, інклюзивності та суспільних змін силою сторітелингу в індустрії розваг. І завдяки запуску своєї стрімінгової платформи та щомісячного кінофестивалю соціального гомоконтенту, на який надходили матеріали з понад 30 країн світу, Джаред та його команди налагодили зв'язки з Голлівудом, зокрема з Академією кіномистецтв та наук, Нетфліксом, Амазоном, Warner Media, Sundance Інститутом, а також режисерами, номінантами та лауреатами премії Оскар. Тож, прошу подивитися звернення Джареда. Hi everybody, my name is Jared Milrad. I am the founder and president of A Show for a Change and Movie Karma, based here in the United States. It's a real honor to be with all of you at Kiev Media Week, at least virtually. I hope you're having a great time. I wanted to just thank the organizers for inviting me to be part of uh, today's session. Uh, today I'll be focusing on social impact content and inclusion in Hollywood. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the presentation and hope to meet all of you in person very soon. Thanks so much. All right, so let's dive right in with a presentation. Again, today we'll be focusing on social impact content as well as inclusion, equity, and representation in Hollywood. Again, my name is Jared Milrad. I'm the founder and president of A Show for Change and Movie Karma. I previously served on President Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton's campaigns, as well as worked in the White House for President Barack Obama. And I founded a number of nonprofit organizations uh, and worked on a variety of social and environmental causes over a number of decades, uh, which has led into my uh, work now as a storyteller and as a social impact filmmaker. A Show for Change and Movie Karma are partner organizations that I founded and now lead. A Show for Change is our award-winning social impact production company and entertainment company, whereas Movie Karma is our nonprofit organization that focuses more on empowering underrepresented talent, uh, particularly behind the camera. And we have a number of programs and initiatives to do that, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Here are the stakes. Here's why these issues are so, so important and why they're really interconnected and, and intertwined. You know, there are many issues that deserve our attention, whether that's climate change or human rights or civil rights issues. Uh, and now we believe is the time for systemic transformation in the entertainment industry. To us, that includes empowering underrepresented talent, uh, but also includes supporting socially impactful content, which we do uh, in a number of ways. This is a great quote from a friend of mine, Bree Frank, who works over at Reese Witherspoon's uh, production company, Hello Sunshine. She said, as people think about diversity and inclusion, it's often treated as an aside, but it's not just a part of your business, it is your business. And I think that's such an important point that uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and social impact are uh, incredibly uh, successful often from a financial perspective, which we'll talk about in a few moments, uh, but also really are integral to the types of stories that move people and inspire audiences around the world. Here's a bit about some of the challenges on the issue of systemic underrepresentation for creative talent. You know, number one, we know that folks behind the camera are very, very underrepresented. We know that only 15% of the top grossing film directors in 2019 were women. Only 14% of those folks were BIPOC, which stands for Black, Indigenous, or People of Color. Uh, and the same across the board at the executive level, at the writing level, uh, we see that underrepresentation continue. Lack of inclusion, as I mentioned a minute ago, is also just bad for business. Uh, there was a study that showed that a movie could lose 82%, 82% of its budget 
when it did not include non-white characters in major roles. And Hollywood is losing on average about $10 billion a year just from inequity as it relates to the black community, not to even mention inequity for folks who identify as Asian or indigenous uh, and so forth and so on. And that also, of course, affects the types of projects we see on the screen. This is a quote from McKinsey and Company who did a, a great bit of research on this issue and basically just found that achieving equity will make the film and TV sector more just, but also more profitable. Here's the current landscape and opportunities for growth on social impact content. We know that young people, for example, are much more likely to donate to our cause and support that cause after they've watched a film or a piece of video content about it. We know that watching one film alone may not have long-term effects on one's attitudes about the issues in that film, but they can really provoke meaningful short-term changes, and that's very, very important. We also know that social impact content performs very, very well at the box office, uh, and there are a number of companies that have made quite a bit of money um, just on focusing uh, on distributing, supporting, and creating socially impactful films and TV shows. Here are a few examples of those films uh, that are socially impactful and also very, very successful the box office. Black Panther, probably the most famous example, earned over $1.344 billion globally at the box office. Uh, Parasite, another great example out of South Korea, earning nearly $300 million at the box office. And Roma out of Mexico, earning over $5 million at the box office and doing a side-by-side -side release and streaming on Netflix, uh, which probably reduced its theatrical numbers, but is a great example of of how to, how to do a little bit of both, streaming theatrical and be socially impactful at the same time. All right, so on that note, I wanted to show you a few clips of socially impactful films. We're gonna start off by watching a clip from the film Black Panther. Uh, we're then gonna move into a short clip from the film Parasite. And lastly, I wanted to share one of the films that we've seen uh, now that we've worked with hundreds of social impact filmmakers globally here at a show for a change in movie karma. And that film is called Until the Last Drop, uh, which addresses issues of uh, inequities, environmental injustices in uh, Israel and Palestine. So let's watch those three clips now and then we'll talk in the, on the flip side afterwards. The time has come for you to come home and be reunited with me. هذه قصة حياتي أنا بحلم أني أقدر أستغل جميع موارد أرضي أحصل على المياه أحصل على عيشي كريمي جاتي لبوم بلي بلي كلوم كان ويوم بروح أشيم أني بخور أني بن أدام شيم أتسليح لأن المواطن الفلسطيني استهدفوه في المياه وهو عمود الحياة 
فرايح يظل يقاوم هان حتى اخر رمق All right, so I hope you enjoyed those three clips. Really, the purpose of that was just to show the diversity and the variety of ways in which filmmakers can incorporate socially impactful themes uh, and be inclusive at the same time, right? Uh, so we saw in Black Panther how they incorporated African traditions and cultures uh, and even religious practices. We did it in a very entertaining and exciting and, and interesting way. We saw in Parasite how the filmmaker incorporated issues of economic inequality and injustices uh, it, by showing the, the ways in which uh, the folks who are lower income in South Korea suffer uh, from things like rain and people who have more resources do not. And then we also saw in until the last drop issues of uh, environmental injustices and inequality. So there are many ways in which you can incorporate socially impactful themes. And again, you can do it in a way that's very financially successful uh, as well at the same time. And so moving on now, this is how we at Movie Carmen and Show for Change create uh, that systemic change we talked about. We build relationships with the likes of Netflix and Amazon and Disney and many others. We also have partnered now with Warner Media on expanding access and opportunity for new voices in Hollywood. And we have a number of ongoing initiatives, such as our podcast, Rewriting Hollywood, uh, which is now streaming globally on Spotify and Apple. You can listen to it right now, and we, you can see how we're spotlighting underrepresented creative voices like Terrell McCraney, incredible Oscar-winning screenwriter of the film Moonlight, or BAFTA-nominated actor Adarsh Varab of the film The White Tiger, a very socially conscious film out of India. Uh, we also have a social impact film festival called a Show for Change Film Festival. If you have a film you'd like us to see, we encourage you to go ahead and submit it to us. We've now worked with over 500 filmmakers from 50 plus countries and nearly half of our filmmakers are underrepresented. And just a few other things to mention, we have a salon series that connects underrepresented voices in real time in person. We just had a kickoff event for that series back in June in Hollywood. And we also have something called the Inclusive Pathways Program that connects underrepresented talent with career opportunities and really gives them a leg up in the industry in part by having what we're calling our inclusive pathways platform uh, that provides those opportunities in real time uh, and really connects underrepresented talent with you know, executives with producers and vice versa so there's that infrastructure for mentorship for growth and so on the goals of that platform are fivefold access sustainability, connections, resources, and community. We think those are really closely intertwined. And here's a, just a quick look at that uh, Inclusive Pathways platform we're building, uh, you, where you can find underrepresented talent. And if you're an employer, you can uh, connect with that talent. And if you're you know, someone looking for opportunities, you can find those opportunities on the platform as well. And finally, to close, uh, you know, I wanted to just give a few notes about what I think needs to happen to create systemic change on inclusion and social impact in Hollywood. Number one, we need financiers and producers to fund those projects. Uh, number two, we need the entertainment industry to really step up, support, mentor, and empower underrepresented talent to level the playing field in the industry. And number three, we need filmmakers, we need audiences, we need activists. We need folks like you in the audience to take action, to use your voice, your resources to support these types of projects. Um, the award-winning actress Carrie Washington said it best. She says that having your story told as any member of any disenfranchised community is sadly still often seen as a radical idea. And so finally, I hope that with your help, with your support, we can change that and really create a new world where socially impactful and inclusive stories can be heard and seen globally. So thanks again to Kiev Media Week for having me. It was a real honor to be here today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thanks so much. Дякуємо Джареду за відеозвернення, а тепер ми можемо переходити до нашої панельної дискусії, яка носить назву «Популярний та прибутковий контент з соціально вговим змістом». Нашими спікерами будуть Ян Макса, директор з контенту та нових медіа «Чеського телебачення», Анастасія Штейнхаус, керуюча директор, директорка телеканалу ICTV, та Ярослав Лодигін, Режисер, сценарист та член правління національної суспільної телерадіокомпанії України. І модеруватиме цю дискусію Катерина Некрасова, керівниця напрямку діджитал-контенту проєкту Transformation Communications Activity USAID. 
Proszę. Dziękuję. Hello, Jan. Do you hear us well? Help. <laughs> Jan, Jan, I, I, I'm afraid we cannot hear you. Yeah, maybe there's a mute button in there. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, maybe you can uh, switch the, the the headset or just disconnect it because we unfortunately cannot hear you still. Maybe we just start. What about now? Here? Oh, is this is perfect. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> All right, let's start. I think everybody's ready. Um, uh, welcome and thank you everybody for coming, dear guests, dear speakers. It's an honor to be here with you at Kyiv Media Week. Uh, my name is Katarina Nekrasova. I'm a digital development lead at Transformation and Communications Activity, uh, which is supported by uh, USAID in Ukraine. Um, I would like to introduce our speakers again. Um, Anastasia, who is uh, from one of the most popular TV channels in Ukraine, ICTV. Uh, Yaroslav, uh, who is a, a member of the uh, board of UAPBC and also is a scriptwriter and a director. And of course, Jan Maxa, uh, thank you for joining us online, um, a director of Czech TV, a public broadcaster in Czech Republic. Uh, our panel today is on my favorite topic, social impact content. Um, we would like to cover today uh, some of the most important questions, in my opinion, about creating social impact content, how to make it popular among the audience, how to um, make producers uh, and big TV channels interested in creating it, and what is uh, not less important, how to measure the impact itself. Um, and um, probably it would be nice to hear some examples of success stories uh, from your experience and uh, hopefully we can answer some of the questions about how social impact content can grow in Ukraine. Um, I would like to start uh, with a question to Anastasia. Um, Creating social impact, social and meaningful content in Ukraine is uh, getting more and more popular in Ukraine. And um, can you tell us a bit how has approach changed to the production and its promotion? Are ratings still the most important thing uh, for big channels, or you do take into consideration uh, some um, storytelling which can have effect on people's lives, on communities' lives? Если вы не против, я буду отвечать на русском. Здравствуйте, я представляю ICTV, это большой канал, канал номер один последних полтора года в этой стране, который является частью большой медиагруппы, самой крупной, Starlight Media. И мы не только как канал, но и как группа очень социально ответственные цели устойчивого развития ООН давно в фокусе Starlight Media. Мы работаем над этим всей группой. У нас очень много общих групповых коммуникационных компаний. Если говорить про последние годы, то, конечно, пандемия очень сильно скосила наш фокус на борьбу непосредственно с ковидом. У нас Starlight Media сделала самые большие коммуникационные компании в этой стране по борьбе с пандемией, по поддержанию карантинных мер. После этого была вакцинация. С недавних пор наша ведущая лицо канала и главный редактор новостей, наш проект «Факты» Елена Фарляк стала амбассадором ООН в части экологических вопросов. И мы надеемся, что пандемия начнет отступать, и мы сможем делать какие-то новые классные коллаборации на тему экологических вызовов. Но наш подход на самом деле, поскольку у нас профиль нашего телеканала смещен очень сильно в мужскую аудиторию, мы лидер по мужской аудитории, и наша аудитория мускулинный контент предпочитает, поэтому некие драматические линии, такие как на нашем сестринском канале в сериале «Мама», которым было уже выше упомянуто, мы не можем себе позволить в силу предпочтения аудитории. 
А более шести лет назад, как мы все понимаем, уже более семи лет страна находится в военном конфликте. Более шести лет назад мы запустили два проекта, которые до сих пор работают в пик прайме, собирают миллионную аудиторию, работают в рекламной модели бизнеса, поэтому они приносят не только удовольствие зрителю, но и рейтинги, которые инвентаризируются каналом. Они называются «Гражданская оборона» и «Антизомби». Обе, оба этого проекта они нацелены на информационную войну, но по сути медиаграмотность и выстраивание ее мы начали более пяти лет назад, и в этих программах есть и факт-чекинг, информационная защита населения. И для нас, как для канала, если помимо устойчивого развития, очень важно держать оборону, потому что все мы понимаем, что нам повезло, мы живем в супердемократическом государстве, в котором любой желающий имеет доступ к любому контенту, который даже как бы запрещен. И он получает ресурсы с эфирных телеканалов соседнего государства и медиа, которые диджитализированы, ему доступны. Поэтому для нас важно, чтобы у нас в... мы могли какие-то мифы развенчивать и нести какие-то истины. В обоих этих проектах Пик Прайме Круглогодично все это происходит, но за счет чего мы достигаем успеха? За счет подачи при всей сложности темы, при всем негативе, который, с которым работает редакторская группа обоих проектов. Они подают это с юмором и иронией. И за счет этого получают охваты до около двух миллионов зрителей. Каждый проект имеет еженедельно. Помимо этого мы выкладываем в бесплатном доступе на нашем сайте, на нашем YouTube-канале оба проекта где есть дополнительно еще полтора миллиона уникальных зрителей еженедельно, и отдельные сюжеты, отдельные выпуски собирают там, до 5 миллионов просмотров. То есть таким образом мы максимально популяризируем какие-то, в общем, борьбу, информационную борьбу. При этом, если наше телевидение, мы работаем только на территории Украины, наш бесплатный спутниковый канал CTV Украин покрывает большую аудиторию, но мы не можем просто оцифровать, кто конкретно нас там смотрит, то если говорить про диджитал, мы точно понимаем, что все эти наши программы, которые мы делаем с любовью и здоровым чувством юмора, несмотря на всю сложность ситуации, очень массово и в большей мере даже смотрят как раз с оккупированных территорий и даже с территории Российской Федерации, что для нас, как для канала, очень важно, потому что информационное поле, ну, в общем, в зоне нашего фокуса. Также у нас был проект, в 2019 году мы выпускали сериал «Доброволец», который затрагивает, это была история воина АТО, который стал уже ветераном, вернулся домой, и помимо проблем социализации вернуться с войны домой на самом деле не так и просто. Мы знаем, что сейчас прекрасный фильм покоряет со схожей историей Венецию, конечно, более кинематографичной. Но, в общем, наша история была про воина то, который вернулся сюда, пытался реализовать себя в обычном мирном Киеве, но, конечно, в рамках жанра на нашем канале он должен был предотвратить теракт, и, и слава богу, он это сделал. То есть мы пытаемся да, находить тот сторителлинг, который подходит нашей аудитории. Мы коммерческий канал, у нас есть... Мы, в общем-то, как... Все телевидение развлекательное, но в рамках наших продуктов мы находим как важные темы. Можно запаковать в иронию юмор или экшен, боевик, в зависимости от истории. Спасибо. Одни уточняющие вопросы и буду двигаться дальше. Вот возвращаясь к тому, что говорил Джаред об инклюзивности, о репрезентативности. Вы говорите о том, что у вас аудитория более мужская, контент маскулинный. Что, ну как-то вы адресуете это? Пытаетесь ли вы как-то добавить больше, возможно, сильных женских characters да, в контент, чтобы женщины тоже были заинтересованы в просмотре этого контента? То есть что значит маскулинный контент? А, да, ну смотрите, мы лидер по мужской аудитории, но в этой стране 50% мужчин, а 50% женщин. И мы как канал абсолютно отображаем эту демографию. У нас 50% мужчин и 50% женщин. Просто ни у кого другого канала нет столько мужчин. То есть мы не работаем исключительно на мужскую аудиторию. Но да, в нашем маскулинном контенте у нас появились сериалы уже за последних пять лет, когда напарника может быть не только такой же брутальный мужчина, но и очень умная женщина, на которой строится на самом деле вся линия. У нас есть проект под названием «Вскрызе покажет», где 
На самом деле главным ключом к успеху в этой детективной истории, которая длилась два сезона, была женщина, а мужчина был ее плечом, который, на который она могла опереться. Но мы просто как канал, у которого 50% мужчин, не можем уступить все кресла женщинам. Где-то мужчина должен показать свой характер, и нашей аудитории это нравится. Мы не видим в этом какого-то унижения чьих-то интересов. Мы за равноправие скорее как-то так. Step by step. <laughs> в общем. Um, спасибо большое, uh, Ярослав. Uh, I will come back to English. Um, you recently had a high-profile premiere of a documentary series Collapse, uh, which had amazing ratings. Uh, at the same time, you are releasing your own investigation films, and you are getting ready for the full premiere of a social talk show. And we all know that UAPBC is not about profit, but still you are probably <laughs> most likely looking to attract as much audience as possible to your content. Um, what are your goals you set for yourself? What are the indicators you're looking for to make sure that uh, the audience is growing, that people who are not used to watch UAPBC will watch it? Thanks. Uh, first of all, hello. Uh, first of all, uh, I need to say that UAPBC, the Suspilne, is not only about television, it's, on, it's also about digital platforms and radio uh, networks, national and and the local TV channels and the local uh, journalist centers around the country. And from this year, we're starting the, to develop the uh, um, hyper-local network of the correspondents that will supply the news of the Suspilne with the very local news from the villages, from, from the very small towns of our country. And uh, um, so it's not only about the video content and, uh, and our Goals are not, lies not only uh, regarding the raising of the viewership or the amount of viewership, which is a very important, and we are used to be judged by the size of the audience. But the UA, PBC, and the idea of public broadcasting in Ukraine is relatively new, so it's around five years of reform, which uh, uh, is transforming the state broadcaster uh, into the public broadcaster. And uh, through, throughout these years, we're facing um, the, the stability with the reception uh, uh, of us from the stakeholders, from the government, from the presidents. So basically, they do not understand the, the idea, the concept of the public broadcaster. So one of our uh, major goals is to change that perception. That, uh, so for example, right now, it's more like, So we are giving you the budget from the state budget, our budget, our money. So it is quite strange that you are not serving us or you know, not covering our events as much as we want. So, um, and their perception and their understanding of the idea of public broadcaster is crucial regarding the uh, budgeting of the public broadcaster in Ukraine. Um, in order to create this social impact content, which is the essence of any content that we produce. It's in our mission. And I, I think Jan, uh, by the way, I was, I, I hope Jan that I will see you in, uh, in Kiev, because last time I saw you in Prague, that was very inspiring. Uh, so n maybe next time. So maybe Jan will, will tell you more about how the developed public broadcasters such as a Czech TV Um, uh, doing it in, in a very, uh, um, in the situation when uh, the Czech public broadcaster uh, funded better, much better than Ukrainian one, like in 20 times more. Uh, so any content that we produce is about social impact. And I like the story, the, the recent story that happened uh, during the Lviv Media Forum when uh, one of our uh, panels uh, with, the, with, the, with the members of the team of Suspilne someone from the uh, hall stood up and says that you saved our village. And uh, the story was about, just about uh, us started to tell stories about that village national-wide or regional-wide. Just to uh, look at people at the small villages, just to start to sharing and spreading their stories, change the perception uh, of their uh, responsibility of the Uh, mayor of this village that understood that the TV channel came to his village and he need to, uh, you know, just cut his corruption and uh, 
uh, bad stuff that he did before. Because people in the regions, in the local, um, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in small towns, still under this um, big romantical uh, perception of television as such as very important stuff. And it is still very important, but, but for them, the television guy that came to their village is something that is reliable, uh, something that's comparable to a uh, Moscow uh, correspondent came to Ukrainian uh, village during the Soviet time. Where, well, everybody is very afraid and, uh, you know, change their behavior. So we started to tell the stories out of, uh, about the villages. We are doing a lot of content that focused on reforms. We are cooperating with the international partners together with USAID. A lot of stuff we did together. And uh, this year we launched a very ambitious uh, commissioning program that are focusing on um, releasing money, releasing budgets on production on the social impact content. Because we as a co company that operates mostly very old-fashioned uh, equipment. We need to, this collaboration with the uh, private uh, enterprises, private companies, and we think, and even big media groups that are st also participating in our, um, com uh, in our co commissioning process, and they are um, participating for having money for the production. I think that could change the, the, the whole landscape in a, in a three, four, five years perspective, if there will be a strong uh, commissioner as public broadcaster with a stable financing that will commission uh, big amounts of money to the market, also to the traditional uh, big commercial media groups, which are all, we need to understand, all um, belong to oligarchs, which are not very um, friendly to Ukrainian society. Uh, so I think that that will affect, uh, th this, this commissioning programs will affect the me media and content landscape dramatically soon. So this year is, is about 100 million uh, grievances that we released on the market. And if we will uh, have the stable finance in next years, we will uh, increase this amount uh, with, for sure. For sure. We have Thank two you. minutes remaining, maybe give the word to Jan. Um, uh, Jan, it's actually will be uh, very nice for us to hear a positive example about uh, a public uh, broadcaster which made it, <laughs> which became commercially successful. I'm sure it will happen to Ukraine, as Yaroslav said, uh, but um, it would be nice to hear from you. How do you manage to combine the socially um, relevant, socially impactful storytelling and uh, the commercial success? Um, I also know that you have this outstanding content uh, measurements um, that you use to understand what is working, what is not. So could you please tell us, share some life hacks with us? Yes, uh, thank you very much for the, for the question. Well, uh, just, you know, first important thing, uh, we don't really talk as a public broadcaster about commercial success because uh, for us, while we sell some limited uh, advertising on, on some of our channels, but it's only a very minor, uh, all commercial income of Czech TV is a very minor part of our financing. 85% comes from license fee. Um, and as you correctly mentioned, uh, we uh, measure the success of, uh, of, our, of our broadcasting, of our programming, of our content uh, th by, through a, a, a methodology which is very much inspired by the methodology which BBC is using and which takes into account uh, uh, the, the obviously the viewership, the numbers, the the, 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 the share of the of the of the of the content, but also uh, also uh, various uh, qualitative uh, factors such as uh, user or viewer satisfaction, uh, how they view the originality and impact of the content, and um, and also uh, also of course value 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 for money. Which is another important factor in 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 an effective running of the public broadcaster, um, and because the time is getting very short, uh, I wanted to I wanted to encourage you 
uh, to really, you know, believe in socially responsible content because we've had, I mean, obviously as a public broadcaster, we are required by by law and by by our by our um, remit to to produce uh, socially responsible content, and most of the or let a lot of the tens of thousands of hours we produce every year is 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 in, falls in the category. But we've we've had some really remarkable examples uh, of, of successful content with proven social impact. And that's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, uh, as an example, two documentaries, one back from 2013, one very recent from last year, to, from 2020. The first one was what was called Crux or Schmeigi in Czech and was about high pressure sales tactics uh, targeting elderly people. Uh, and uh, at that time, it was in the cinemas, it was very successful for a documentary because about 35,000 people went to see it in cinemas, but it had 1.2 million viewers on when premiered on Czech TV, which is comparable to, to, to you know, high value drama, which is it's about, it re re represents about 30% market share. And, but it also resulted in, in much bigger awareness of the issue, which was a very big issue at the time in the society. Uh, it resulted in big fines uh, towards, uh, towards the companies which were using these uh, tactics towards uh, old people. And actually one of the companies closed its, its Czech subsidiary and, and the new law was adopted to protect uh, consumers. So there was a clear impact. And another, just to conclude with another very strong example, uh, was called In the Net. Uh, uh, and it was it was a documentary. Uh, it was a it was a documentary about sexual pred pred predators. Sorry, targeting underage girls uh, online. Uh, and this was this was put in cinemas during the COVID pandemic, and yet managed to attract over four four hundred thousand cinema viewers, which is typical for a very successful uh, feature film. And on TV again, it was about 1.2 million. And and while on top of raising obviously a lot of you know media and public awareness of the issue, uh, and 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 spawning various training programs for uh, for parents and, and and children to to behave better uh, online and watch for the dangers, it also resulted in several high-profile uh, arrests of the perpetrators. So. Uh, this shows that uh, you know, being brave, you can do, you can achieve real social impact, but also a clear success, which I'm sure for a commercial uh, broadcaster would also translate into profitability. Thank you so much. I will quickly ask: uh, uh, Could you share what is the role of the state in your program planning? Like, do they suggest when you collaborate with the state, with the government? Do they suggest like what social issues should be covered, or are you just like completely independent, see the most uh, significant issues in the country and you address them? Very briefly, I'm sorry, I have to say this. <laughs> Sorry, this was a question for me. Oh yes, yes, Jan, it was a question for you. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Uh, well, the state, of course, would love to influence our programming, but we don't let them. <laughs> very, <are> brief. <laughs> very brief. <laughs> very brief. We're quite independent. I must say the legislation protects uh, Czech TV fairly well from uh, from political influence. And, but on the other hand, of course, we work with the, we cooperate with the state during the, during the COVID pandemic as every public broadcaster, we supported uh, the, the efforts to, to, you know, to spread information and to, to support the vaccination effort, et cetera. But if the, you know, if the government really wants us to support something which is worthy, uh, then they also have to contribute the money. Thank you. Thank you very much to our speakers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katarina, and um, thank you very much, Transformations um, um, TS TCA and USAID for their support, and uh, hope to see you soon 